Brethren, we are doing the abiding faith. Abiding faith. We have looked at the word abiding. I don't think we have a problem with abiding. Do we? No. We don't have a problem with the abiding. We start to understand that. But faith. 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 What is faith? What is faith? To me, it's the meat of everything. I mean, Hebrews 11 Chronicles, a set of people that has obtained the promise. You know what it also points out to me? That we might, we, we might be batting here and there and running here and there, but there is one particular thing. There is one particular thing, and if we should find that thing and pursue that thing, that's where our eternity lies. That's where our victory lies. It is a confusion of the many things. That may be all I said. What is faith? Let us look at Hebrews chapter 11. And let us see what verse 1 says. See what the Bible says on that question. The Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And you know, you know, for years, I, brethren, I thank God, but you know, I don't know if anyone will understand. So let me, let me really, anyhow, put it out there. Faith, as the Bible depicts it, now faith is a substance of things hoped for. But what is it saying? Is it saying that in the Bible sense of faith, the abiding faith, the overcoming faith, does the definition here say that that faith is based up in the substance of anything, of things that we hope for? Am I to understand that it continues in verse 2 and onward and lists a set of man that had faith in things hoped for? Is faith then, is faith then for us? Because there's faith and there's faith. I don't want to deal with the abiding faith, the overcoming faith. The one that we're using the chapter to look at. We use examples of names of men here. That's what I'm dealing with. I'm not talking about you're praying for tuition. You're praying for a husband. You're praying for a car. The car breaks down. You're in a danger. I'm not talking about that because I realize it was not talking about that. Your safety. Where you live is dangerous so you need the best security system. And God led you to have faith. I want you to know that many of these men critical have chronicled in faith face death or killed. So it could never be that that faith is talking about your protection. Impossible. Hence we will not. So here we are having difficulty with the bills. Here we are having our difficulty. Let me tell you something. That's not what it's talking about. We have been mixing this thing. I've realized that we would never ever reach a point. At the point that we would. Let me give you who had that idea. Peter had that idea. Faith in where he will be when Christ should have taken the kingdom. Faith in who he was among the group. And what did he produce? Cut off a man's ears, defending that faith. And also when the fire gets hot, rejecting that faith. Is that your life? It has been mine for a long time. Faith defending my life. But I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 6. And let me tell you the promise for your life. A matter of fact, you should never, what it you, you should never, we should never have any faith or have anything to do with your life. The thought of what happened to you should be there. We should never care for the things that we eat, drink, wear, or anything like that. We are warned against that. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 6. And we are going to start. Let's say 24. Matthew chapter 6, and we we'll start with verse 24 and hear what it says. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one or love the other, or else he will hold to the one 
and despise that he cannot serve God and my man. Do you know what that's saying? You want me to actually, actually say what it's saying in other words? It's saying you can't have two faith. You can't have faith in your food, your safety, and faith in God as your order to be victorious. You're going to hate one and love the other. We don't have to go far. So a light bulb should pop in our head. That's our life. That's what happened. We neglect God a lot. God is neglected. And we secure the now and then. Our health. We don't want to have cancer, so we find all means of preventing. We don't want to be evicted, so we find all means of owning. We don't want to be uneducated, so we find all means of being educated. We don't want to be pauper, so we find all means of earning. In this pursuit, you could never be, and it is impossible for you. I could say boldly because no one can say, oh, God, you lie because here I am or there he is. You could never be, I could never be true servant of God with any of this. Brethren, it's new to me. I hope you'll understand what I'm saying. It is impossible. It is not hard that you have a try. When Christ said to them, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you want to tell me you don't have greater faith than most and see all that time? Be honest, you say, haven't you? Haven't you exercised some great faith and haven't seen the mountain move yet? But the faith we have been exercising so great is in the wrong area. It cannot move mountain. And so we despise one and serve the other. Maman here is represented in the whole affairs of our lives. Might not be the physical money. So we always think we are good because we are not rich. It is the rich that sticks is talking. Those who handle money. But don't you realize a man who is rich with handling money and you who have none are at the same place spiritually? So why haven't you gained anything? Why haven't I gained anything? Because faith here, it is not the same faith that Abel exercise. It's the same faith we have to exercise. So how then my faith is in my safety, my security? God keeps me and will keep me. Richard, my faith is strong, so I'm securing myself. I'm protecting myself. That shouldn't have been my desire and my ambition. Because it wasn't Abel's. He didn't run away from the brother going to slay him. It wasn't Stevens. Stevens didn't try to object. Yes, my brother. I'm not sure that everybody understanding what you're saying. Um... Because everybody is quiet. Yes. I'm going to open to them. So. <laughs> but I, um, I was just reading a statement just this morning from a guy named George Orr. Let's say, in the midst of the seat, if truth is spoken, it will cause a revolution. Have you read that? No, but I believe that. Right. And I realize yes. if, if everybody yes. understands what you're saying, it might rub hard, yes. but it's the reality. Yes. Because the truth is, for all of us, we, are, we have been talking about faith, but the faith that we are talking about is what you are talking yes. about in our survival, yes. in our day-to-day -day -day living, and not necessarily in the person right. that is which, which is necessary exactly. for the reality that is coming. My brother, when this popped in my head last night, that's why I say, it is just something I'm seeing, I hope you will catch it. Well, let, me, let me understand it clearly. Yes. Are you saying, for me, to want to own something? It's not right. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying abiding faith. We're talking about overcoming. I hope the topic means for everyone here eternally. I hope it means I need to have this faith to be able to be counted as those chronicles in Hebrews 11. I hope that's everybody's on that page. Good. Now, I'm saying oftentimes or ever since that accumulation, it has never been realized why. Haven't you had much more faith than what Christ asked of the disciples who couldn't cast out the demon from the boy? Mustard seed, the smallest seed ever. Haven't you had mustard seed faith yet? You mean none of us have had a mustard seed faith? So what is the problem? Yes, we have the ability to have faith, but where it's directed is where we're counseled it shouldn't have been. I'm talking to Christians now, I hope. <clears throat> I hope I'm talking to people who are talking about eternity. I hope I'm moving away from the mixture of our minds with things and world plus God. That will work. Mm. That's where mammon and God, you must reject one. Well, you want to know if you have a reject, rejected one? Can you be chronicled yet 
among those of Hebrews 11. If you can, then you have indeed chosen the right one. The reason why I cannot be chronicled there, because my faith, and I've prayed for it and I've exercised it so much, has been towards man. It's not talking about dollars. It talks about my protection, my health, my well-being. That's where my faith has been, hoping God would have kept the provide, and so I will be this, his child to go to heaven. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. So, when we look at Matthew, let's read on in Matthew chapter from 24 on. <clears throat> Hear what it says. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What is Christ saying here? Think about your life, but don't be so much. Or when you think about your life as Christian, do it in a way so that it's a blatant warning. It should not be on your mind. <coughs> your life. You see, we, the disciples, had faith. You see, we have reached a point where we start having faith in the result of what a faithful life should produce. So when we pray for the blind, our faith is in the result. We want to see the eyes open. That's not bad, but it doesn't produce anything. You see, pardon me? Why pray if you don't want to see the eyes open? No, listen, the point is, is that should be the objective. The objective should be, and it only works when there is faith as, as Abel had faith. It is the same faith that Enoch had, we ought to have the same way. The results God will grant according to how he sees fit. You get what I'm saying? We're not praying for our well-being. We should not be praying for our well-being. And our future, that's not the point here according to the Bible. I say it's new. And I know it might not be grass for a while. I'm going to open. <coughs> right? That's not what we have to be praying for according to the, 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 the text. These things your Heavenly Father know. He goes far as to say, listen man, I can't show you a bird. I can't show you some flowers which are well taken care of. Don't you think I know that you need these things? Don't you think I know that don't you think I'm not capable enough as a father? So where should your faith be then? What should the praying be for? The praying should be for this. In the very promise that Abel had, that Enoch had, Enoch took it a little further than many. Enoch went as far in those days to say, Christ live in me, I please him. He took it a little farther than David. David did his thing, but he had a faith in something that was promised. That's the only faith we can have that will produce anything. The faith in that God, through Jesus Christ, will dwell in me. And how we do that? How we measure it? Because it starts with Abel. What did Abel know to pray for before? The only thing was that the Redeemer. Isn't it true? The first sacrifice... The sacrifice. He didn't pray for the fire. He, he prayed according to the promise. And God answers his prayer with the fire. You get the point? Are we getting it? It is his faith for what God says he's living up to. As a result of that fire came and consumed his offering. The brother was praying outside of that. Not praying that the promise will come and dwell with him because there was no blood. Saying that he has out Christ. Christ was not in his thing. But he was a good church person. He obeyed the Lord. He presented what he had. But God had asked for something. He presented what he had, the best of what he had, to the point where he was upset when nothing happened. But he had faith in man. His own idea. His own benefits. And so God could never answer his prayer with fire. Could never ratify it. It's the same faith. I'm going to open them. It's the same faith we have to have today. But we have grown to a place where our faith is in many things, good things. Don't get me wrong. In many good things. But you might not feel well about what I'm saying, but it has produced nothing. Use the very evidence of what our faith to realize that there might be something wrong. 
before, uh, before, you, before we open up so you could answer, let's go from the evidence of what our faith has produced. Right? The evidence. Or else you will have to stop this morning. We'll have to conclude that God has misled us somewhere. Alright? The asking is beyond us. He has misled us somewhere in terms of faith. But you notice that in Matthew chapter 6, we are first told that take yourself out of the picture because God have you covered. The Hebrew boys understood this. And they had nothing to say about their own life. They never needed to be alive. What they would not compromise in the faith that God lives and will live in them. Would live in them. The promise. The same thing Abel had. Enoch had. You remember Abraham? Abraham did not even care about his well-promised son. In the sense that he would have thought twice not to obey what the Lord says. Because in all that he sees the promise, Christ. So brethren, any other thing we have on our mind about faith, that is not the promise, Christ, is where our faith is not the faith that is abiding that can produce anything. Questions? Story. Is Abraham like these men who have submitted their faith in God? Mm -hmm. They... Um, were sh they were so secure in their belief that there uh, um, nothing else mattered. The, the, the relationship that even Abraham was asked to sacrifice his son, he never thought about it twice because he knew confidently who he was talking to. And what about the knowing? What about that? And I'm saying then that because he knew, right, mm -hmm. he was secure. Security is something that faith brings. All right. Today, we human beings, mankind, modern living, have substituted that faith to man-made devices, man-made understanding of securing yourself. And you mentioned mom, mom, and you mentioned the things that make people secure in this life. But in doing that, they have. They have actually substituted and pushed true faith out of the picture. And even modern Christianity, and which we now enjoy, still, it's not pure faith. So I, I, I hope you're not saying, though, that people today who ask don't know who they're asking and don't know. No, I'm not I'm saying that. Speaking broadly. Right. Speaking. We're not saying Christians don't know God and not asking of God. Right. But we realize that there's not a response right. in, 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 in equal to the promise. Is we all can say that. Is that true? Mm -hmm. There's not a response to our life according to the promise, right? Yeah. And that's and that's so but what happened to them while they asking and Christ even said, Libby, you don't even have to go so far. If the faith in the right direction is as small as a mustard seed, it will move mountain. If you have faith at all in the then um, nothing can can sway you from what you know to be true. You, you, you see, you see, you see that, and, and, um, and that's where, that's my thought, my original thought. But I'm sort of dragging your mind, Tony, because that's the same old talk. Mm -hmm. That if you just need to have faith, I'm no faith. And brethren, if you just have faith, and, and that's what's been good. It has kept us from another group, right? We could have been in the streets doing other things. It has been, it has served a purpose. But is it serving an eternal purpose? How many of us sitting here hoping that if Christ comes now we'll be saved? And even though we might not be. Forget about coming. Because that is the benefit of all. That's the culmination. How many of us right now have people suffering and can't help? How many of us right now that the drug company is somewhere making medicine knowing that you are the first custom or you will always supply them? Um, yes. When we have a God who says otherwise, how many of us sitting here right now? How many of us in this room? All of us. I could, well, for me, I could, who have been very hypocritical in my belief because it's not happening. I'm pursuing. How many of us right now? People won't follow me. My friends, some of them won't. 
Because as one person told me, you know, the thing that I am running down, the rich man have it, he don't see, he doesn't need my God. He doesn't need my God. Most of us are pursuing a, a way out of poverty, a reasonable living. Mm. That's our objective of our life. In the name of the Lord. The smart man out there, intelligent man out there who has it, born with it, inherited, don't need your position. He doesn't need your Lord because you have what you're pursuing in the name of the Lord already. So Christ has directed us in our path that everybody has this need. All have this need. And it is the need of a savior. It is the need. The rich man wants you. Naaman wanted to see the little prophet across the borders of some other country. Naaman really wanted to see the Jordan, the dirty Jordan. Because he though, even though he's a commander and a chief, even though he had gold that mules can't carry, he didn't have what the old man who didn't spare much time just sent a servant to tell him what to do had. He didn't have that. That was a Christian. That was a man of God. That's a man of faith. Mm -hmm. That's the faith I'm talking about. Are we grasping now that we don't have the faith? Are we, are we getting it? Are we going around the same beautiful thing of faith? And so Moses had faith. And so David. And so, so we need to have faith now. Let's go there tomorrow and have faith. That's why the rain didn't pay. That's why we need to have some more faith. Are we still looking there? Are you understanding what I'm saying? That's the point I'm making. I'm saying. Your nakedness don't matter to God. Your death is not his big thing. It wasn't a big thing when, when Steve was stoned. It wasn't a big thing when Cain killed Abel. It wasn't a big thing when Abel was chronicled as he was speaking today because of faith. But our faith is turning the opposite direction. Our faith is that we will never suffer the consequence or the thing that Abel suffered. We want God to keep us above that. <sighs> Who's understanding? Who is understanding what faith is? And you see now, if you have the right faith, you don't need the side of a mustard seed. You realize now? That's what we need. Faith. Not one that wants your head to feel better. God says, don't worry about you. You're serving mammon and God, you're going to reject one and love the other. Most times, it's God rejected. Yes, my brother. <coughs> I'm sure there are probably some other, other folks before me, but um, since nobody hand is up. Um, I, I've looked at that mustard seed. Uh, you, you said it's the smallest of all seeds and, and I don't necessarily agree but here's something that, 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 that opened up to me recently you ever look at a Kalalu seed? yes a mustard seed can compare to a Kalalu seed? I've never seen a mustard seed you know right I've seen I've seen different varieties of it but it's nothing to compare excepting in this one instant and um, this just jumped out at me because it was it is the smallest seed that produced such great result don't forget that it's not just the size of the seed it's, it's the per, it's what the size of the seed produces why jesus mentions it praise the lord all right so keep that in mind amen so in our 40 50 60 years and 70 for those who think they'll get there anyway do you think in that lifetime you're going to grow enough faith don't you realize by your first faith you're taught as a child is to get to school without accident. By the time you move to that, there's another faith. And all these faiths that you have been bred in, all this understanding of faith is your own preservation. It's your own well-being in the name of the Lord. But the human mind and the human psyche were built not to take too much lies. So why do you think we kick it out sometimes? Why do you think we prefer to have some party sometimes? Because that's a real thing. When you're in the world, it's real. There's no controversy in the world. You're in the world. You're not fooling anybody. You're not playing anything. You're in the world. You enjoy it have its pleasures. You enjoy it. But in the Christian faith, in the Christian faith, faith, there has been a lot of ups and downs and deception. Blatant deception. Misunderstanding. We have become madmen. We're doing things the same way over mm -hmm. and over and wouldn't even investigate why we're not having mm -hmm. a different result. We wouldn't even look at that. Mm -hmm. We are so bred that if we, we, we are, it's, it's blasphemous to look at why I'm not overcoming. It is a blasphemy to question God and why you say that and it's not happening. Not even for mm -hmm. myself, but for people I know who are more faithful than I am. Mm -hmm. What is your point? My time is running out. Is it in me or not? Why are you giving me the life of men who have obtained it? 
and what for me seems like is a generational thing. What is your point, God? What is your point in the word? We wouldn't even do that. If we would, he would have said, all right, my child, let me show you something. It seems like you're ready to know something. We would have looked beyond. So brethren, faith, abiding faith. It is not to abide in asking for the same thing so that the children may make it out, so that the marriage may work, so that the job will hold, so that the disease will go or never come. That's not it, according to my Bible. That's not it. That's not it. You, want, you know what it seems like they're saying? The son of a millionaire is having faith to make sure that he gets some dinner every night. The son of the man who holds a position in his hand and has no problem with the son. But this son is acting like us as Christians, hoping that he will have something each day. What would you say about have that son? What would you say of that son? The same thing you would say of yourself who have pursued and have made it in life and acting like you're a papa. What would you say of that son? But it's the same thing we could say of ourselves as Christians. Are you a child of God? <coughs> Are you living by faith as you sing the song? Yes, you might have been. But do you realize that it's not? Are you honest enough? I am asking you because I ask myself these questions. And if it's otherwise, raise your hand and say, my brother, we me, it's otherwise. Are you honest enough to realize that faith is producing nothing eternally? Are you honest enough? I say, if it's not so with you, raise your hand. In relation to what Christ has promised. In relation to what Christ has promised. So what is the problem? <clears throat> the problem is, you must remember that there is God and there is man. There is God and there are things. Right? It's talking to you, child of God. There is God on, the, on your right hand side and there are things on your left. You can't serve God on the right and the things on the left. You can't do it. You'll be confused. You're going to love one and hate the other. Most time you love the one that you see most. Because remember, seeing God is through faith. The things you see is the thing you taste, eat, hug, love, talk to, reason with, right? It's, it's the pain you feel. So you will, re, you will curse God when the pain turns out. So we are encouraged to make sure that we love God and leave things alone. And he goes on to say, let me tell you something. You might be worried about how you're going to eat. He says, don't even worry about that. He said, you might be worried about what you will wear. If I'm out of tune, if I'm where none of us idea and mind is, this is not why we go to work. This is not why we miss some time in devotional time with God to get these things and raise your hands, right? You might be wondering what you will eat. You're wondering how your bills will be paid. You might have looked around and read the statistic that many people are evicted because they didn't pay the bill. You might look on the streets and those who you see and know their situation, you have no desire going there and all you need to do is to pursue something otherwise. All these might have been your thought, but the Bible says, in Matthew chapter 6, it says, I want to tell you something. The wisest man and the richest man ever chronicled in the Bible was Solomon. And he says, when you look at what God does to the lily, to the grass and the bushes, which is today and is burnt tomorrow, Solomon with all his money cannot dress like them. And it's a comforting thing to you and I to say that you don't have to worry about what you will put on. He mm -hmm. goes on to say <coughs> that you might be worried about your physical body. But the challenge is, let me see which one of you by warriors ever add one cubit to your height. What else do we need to look into the picture and say, oh, you know what it is? And I want to show you how big it is. It is actually culture and it is actually embedded ideas and thought. What you and I worry about in this world today, some cultures don't worry about it. 
right? The clothes. <coughs> in the in the Unza Valley, some people they don't even know what clothes is. All right. So it's just to show that there is it is definitely a cultural persuasion that has that is mammon that really really proves the Bible to be true. It's not a universal sway. Many of us might worry about the latest right. But some countries don't. Because right now, the best way to get around in some countries, even the Irish country in the United States, they don't bother with cars, it's a donkey car. So they don't have that mentality of pushing to, you know, car payment, right? Mm -hmm. So it shows that that's another testimony right now and then in our way, in our time. Well, some might be worried about pain and disease, right? Right, we might have disease, our disease is growing, our, and we have seen this link full of people who died from disease. Well, <coughs> well, I want to tell you that the Bible has said, and many today has been chronicled, where little faith has touched some people who have had worse disease than the one someone died when is healed. But here is where our hands are tied, because we are not going to spend a life. Pursuing the things of this world, it's just, I'm just going to chase. I'm talking to me. I'm talking to me. I'm not going to spend my life, most of my life, pursuing, however ignorant or however I've known this, the bottom line is if I was just ignorantly wrong. I'm not going to spend my life pursuing most of my hours in these things that my society says is well. It's good. And then get the result that God offers and promises Abel, Enoch, Abraham. It's impossible. I have to join the line that they were in. And for them, they only had a prom they only had got a promise and they put faith in that promise. For me, it's a reality. I have the stories and the evidences that that one came, lived, and promised to live in me. Yes, my brother. <coughs> I just wanted to say that you realize that, that Paul had to write about the icons of faith, which then were the people you mentioned, mm -hmm. Abel and Enoch and so on. I do mention those people because I have greater than they had. What I have is Jesus and Paul and Peter. I have greater than those men had. Because, um, honestly, could, could you compare the faith of Jesus with any of those men in the Old Testament? Could you compare the faith of Paul with any of those in the Old Testament? So I realize that when you read Hebrews, you have to understand Paul never had the New Testament that we have. So Paul, all that Paul had are those icons that him all up, David and all those people. Right. But when they come to New Testament and New Covenant people, they, they far exceed because the kingdom has now come and produces a far different quality. So that's why he said they, they, they only got, only received a promise. They didn't even get the real thing. Mm. No, it is not the fact that we have with little faith, not enough faith. There's nothing wrong with our ability to have faith. Absolutely, that is intact. That was given by God and it's intact. The point is that I'm making brethren is that it has been used in the wrong way. Mm. So it has been mixing the ingredients that we mix for faith to produce these great things are wrong. We, are make, we cannot mix mammon and God. We have to have one or the other. And if we have mammon, it produces what we have today, a life that is always needing God. God is void. Today's day, we are reaching, you know, what we, I, I give thanks for Christianity because it keeps me safe. It keeps me from a lot of ill. Ill of my brother, because if Christianity has demanded that in order for me to be a Christian, <coughs> I have to demonstrate it, and if not, I would have to pay a price. I would be dead. You understand? But Christianity keep me not safe. All I need to tell you, I have faith in my heart for God. Life doesn't say nothing does it, but all I have to say, and you have to believe. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? You have to believe. You have to believe. All I need to state is, is all right, man. And guess what? I can reach a stage where I will make you start wonder and believe. Because my strive or my growth on the things of this world is start getting there. I own two houses now. I have 
with really few I heard some story right here. Not recently, a guy told me how well he's doing an Adventist. And you know, very, 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 he's very, I can't remember that, he's very thrifty. You know, I, I really applaud him for his financial um, ability, ability, yeah. Yes. And, um, but the point is, he never stopped to say that Bridget, brother, and me and my wife start, never my tithe and offerings are sure, and we never envy. What he's saying is that one of the blessings or one of the means through which he is, and I do know honestly that my brother, like, I need prayers, spiritual, you know, to grow. I know that. But what he's saying is that if, because he has been very faithful with his tithe and his offering, God bless it you. is an evidence that the things he has. So that has been, what is he saying to me? What is he telling himself? That it is a faith in the mammon, in these things, that has afforded him these material things. Anybody understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't really think you're getting anything what I'm saying. Listen, we need to redirect the same faith we have because Peter, um, I'm going to say like, Peter and the rest are who? No, the disciples who are at the foot of the Mount of the Transfiguration, who had great faith and take on the task to cast out the devil out of the little boy field. And they tried and they feel and they grinch and they wonder. Christ came and tell them one thing, oh, you have little faith. Which is to say that you have no faith in what you should have faith. And if you should have enough faith in that as a mustard seed, it would have happened. When that same, that same set of people, people's faith was redirected, brother Lloyd, it were the same ones now who raised the dead, who did marvelous things after Christ has left them and has empowered them. He didn't give them new faith. They had faith, but redirected, the same faith redirected. I'm proposing to the class that what happened to us and faith, the abiding faith, it needs a redirection entirely. We are getting there, I know, and I know we have partially. That's why we are here as Christians, right? But the reason why we must always check our own temperature, our spiritual temperature, in according to the promise of God, why we're not obtaining it, it's not on the part of God, it's on us. So if it's his faith that will produce this, as Christ says, maybe his faith is redirected, needs a redirection. And the one I'm pointing in is the one that Abel had, that, um, that Moses had as a boy, that his parents had. It had nothing to do with their bodily. When Moses was hid, it was because they, they know the story of the coming, you understand, the coming Messiah. They wanted him to fulfill that role. It wasn't to save his life, per se. You get the point? It wasn't so much a saving of his life. It was to fulfill the Messiah's plan. So in our pursuit today, in what we have faith in, it should be 100% to fulfill the Messiah's promise, his life in us. So wherever it takes us and what it drives, we should be ready. Are you ready to walk through the street of man partially naked, if that's what the Lord say? Are you willing and ready to take your child and sacrifice, if that's what the Lord say? Are you willing to be stoned to death without a remorse, if that's what it comes to? I could go through the list of these people. Are you willing to do it? Then if you say no, and if I say no, then you realize that we, didn't, we don't have the mindset that they had when they did that and was chronicled as people's faith. Maybe it's too much. Um. Um, <coughs> I understand every word you're saying. When I um, started like studying this topic, it was very difficult for me. Like I had to tell God that I cannot understand you. Right. And it was really hard to find the answer based on how we were taught. How I, um, based on how I knew of what I, and what I knew about faith. But after I read um, Galatians 5 and verse 6, mm -hmm. uh, for, in Christ Jesus, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing 
it says to love. Mm. And we all know that love is Christ. Mm. But it, it still seems difficult because um, it's hard to understand it, that I must just give everything to Christ and not like have a mind of my own. Mm. It's like it's a burden. But when I dig deep into it and I understand fully that it's Christ through me. That's why even this morning I said that um, we all have learned that it's not the physical that makes the difference. But even faith that makes the difference, it is Christ because of his love. Is that what we use in Jamaica? Um, yeah, um, I can understand what she's saying. I'm sure we all, we've all had that struggle. Right? But you have to understand that we were born and bred in the things of mama. Yes. We were born and we were taught everything was, our whole life was nurtured in having faith in mama. Now, think about a relationship with your spouse. Let's say that person does something to break down that trust or whatever, you're trying to mend that relationship. How do you do, go about doing that? How do you get to trust that person again? It takes a deliberate effort to, to, to accept the person's word when the person says it. it. It takes a deliberate effort to spend more time with that person and so forth. We ask for faith, right? Mm -hmm. The issue is not trying to must up faith. Faith is not something you can must up. Exactly. Right? It comes through a relationship. Now, me personally, I found myself asking for things and almost every time I go on my knees are asking God for something. My issue is not even to asking for faith. That's not my prayer. How much time do we spend with Him alone, just talking to Him? About anything. Not just not asking him for something, not even faith. As a father to a son. As a father to a son. Just building that relationship. I think when, when we get to that place where we have that relationship, everything else will fall into place. My issue is not even worrying about going to heal people, going to witness to people, nothing like that. That will come. It into will right come. Time. That is a result that, of the relationship. You understand what I'm saying? I'm getting to that point. I'm getting to that point. I'm getting to that. Um, verse 26 of Matthew chapter 6. Um, there's another pointed thing here that is brought it out. It says, Behold the fowls of the air, they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. What do you think about it? What's he, what is he driving at? What, before we finish the text, what is this point driving at? Preparation. Huh? Um, Preparation. No, the 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 providence of God. The, the providence of God. Yes. Dependent on God. All right. But you know something? It's not answering and it's not addressing our failures. People who have failed. People who don't do it. Let me tell you. Right now. Right now. If you, we, this should be mentioned in certain settings where there are more people and people who have and don't have. It will be a divided mindset. The ones who have will not have something good to say or believe. They'll have an argument. The ones who don't have will say hallelujah, praise the Lord, because they fit their situation. This is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Bible straightforward as what the word of God says. Not a, There's a word we use in Jamaica called croft. None of us want to be a croft. But this was a made thing. Right? I'm not talking about the fact that honestly when you look at your neighbor or your counterpart or your friend or your brother or sister, you definitely have more dinner from them. You live in a more reasonable. You really drive when they and they're really still toiling. I'm not saying these things. What society has imposed on us and a better way of living, so to speak, a better way of living. That's not what I'm saying. Let us take ourselves as, as coming from Mars, not understanding our condition. Because if you're gonna evaluate your condition, that means you're not to worry. No. If you're gonna start evaluate your condition. And honestly, you believe that if you didn't push out and do some smart business early, you wouldn't have been like Contam, who definitely had it hard and can't. That's not what I'm saying. If you do that, then you will find a reasonable way to explain God had better thing for you 
than what your ambition has brought you. I'm saying that the condition you find yourself is a little better than so. God had better than that for you. You have actually put yourself in thought and think you're doing good. But I want to tell you, say you're not. You're not as good as Shields. You're not doing as good as Mr. Shields or Mr. Heavens. So don't, let's not use that. I'm talking about our salvation. I'm talking about being out here and when Mr. Shields cried out in pain for cancer, all they can send for was you. And they didn't even go. They said, I'm telling what to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the fact that you made some money and you have some 401k or something somewhere so you can afford your doctor bill. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about faith. Abiding faith, overcoming faith, the people of God faith, faith that works. A faith that man doesn't even love him himself. Mm. He's willing and ready. He's not here for the gals. I'm not talking about our condition and our situation. If you start up there, your mind will be confused. Mm. If you start looking at the children and where you're coming from and hope they have a better life, you will not understand what I'm saying. Mm. I'm talking about what the Bible offers. That we have not been fulfilling faith, abiding faith, not faith in mammon, not in my understanding and society. What you know and I know is a societal thing. It is society make what you know and you're pursuing. Other society don't offer that. Mm. And this same society is moving in a place where it's going to make you a slave. Already, actually. And then you will realize that you have missed the mark. I'm not talking about our experiences. If you're going to use the experience you have, you will not understand what I'm saying. I'm talking about faith. Bible faith. Faith that moves mountain. The longing for action of God's people in this world. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Um, wait, um, I'm, I'm getting what you're saying. And things that... Um, when we hear a million or one sermons on our feet, Yes. And things that I've never heard anybody will, will probably look at it quite like this. The thing is that society dictates to us everything. Yes. The clothes we wear, um, even more, even more church going, the, the way we operate at church and whatever, society dictates that. Yes. Very much. Well, that, Every yes, single soul inside. Yes. And the thing is that society dictates to us that um, we care. You must have something because the thing is that the neighbor who is not a Christian looking at you who is yes. a Christian. When we we'll say, I mean, how come you say you're a Christian and you're not better off? Right. Mm -hmm. How come you not have certain things? I mean, how yes. come you have the same bills to pay? You have to be killing yourself yes. to pay the bills. How come you, you, um, you have to be killing yourself to pay the, the, um, the light bill to um, send the children to school or whatever? All those things. Going to church, the same thing. Church, society dictates what you do at church. Yes. Everything. The thing is that, um, I mean, as you say, we have to. Redirect our thoughts to the word, our mind. See we can I mean, yes. church. I've heard pastors preach and then preach about uh, faith. Yes. And the thing is that as soon as they start preaching about faith, the prosperity thing comes in. Yes. Most. You know, how much things you have, how much things God give you. Because you do this and because you do that, you get this. And I mean, I mean, I've never heard anyone say, as a matter of fact, in 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 Hebrew, you know, read in Hebrew. Almost everybody stopped short when it comes to the last part of Hebrew when they say those men live in caves and they go around in sheep's clothing and they go yes. around in this. I've never heard anyone expound on that. Yes. They talk about um, the prosperity and faith. Having yeah. faith in God. Yeah, I mean, just the good part. You have this, you have that. You are able to build this, you are able to ob obtain that. Yeah. I mean, all of these things. Yeah. And I mean, we well, have to say we just get confused. But society, society yes. can't fuse us, yes. or church, or everything. Yes. Go ahead. So, are you saying there's no, to have faith, you cannot be prosperous in this life? Right, let me answer that. The thing is that, what we just read in, in Matthew, you see? Yes. Jesus never said we have to have faith to wear clothes. He never said we have to have faith to have anything, because if we are his, what he's saying is that he's the care of us. Right. Mm -hmm. That is not where right. your faith should be directed. Because you have to have faith to have all of these but, things. What Christ is saying is that 
those are the non-essentials and you shouldn't even be thinking well, that, that, about that exactly what we, what what we call prosperity. What do we call prosperity? Uh, you know, we don't even call good health prosperity because we eat, drink and everything. What we call prosperity is physical, monetary, tangible yeah, thing. You know, right. we, exactly. you know, it's a mix up of prosperity and real prosperity is actually if you could live healthy enough, that if on a physical level. The real prospering person here is with age. They are aging gracefully in terms of health. That's a real thing. Because the one who thinks that monetary prosperity is when you hit with in today's day with one dose of disease, you're wiped out. Monetary, right? Just by testing, testing. Okay? So so that's a confusion. But what God is saying to us to us, see, is that He says, Af by having faith, I will give unto you what you need. Maybe it's death. No, we run from that. Because Abel, it was death. You understand? And maybe it's and money. And job it is. Good. It is. But maybe it's it is wealth. No, we love that one day. Because, you understand what I'm saying? It can come. The yes. Can come. Yes. There's no. Re so you know what I'm saying? No, because, uh, not to, but you seem to be leaning more to it. Like, but there is the exception. Yes. Where God's people right. can. What I'm not looking at is the reward that God gives. I'm looking at the faith we must have. Because too often, we in our faith swirls because we see the type of reward it will give. Too often, we go to the degree because of the benefit. Maybe we understand that language better, right? Because of the benefit of the degree, we shoot for that degree. Too often, we, we for too often, serve God and pray more or have faith because of the benefits, tangible, the one we kill you to. The money that somebody kill you for, the ones where you have to grill up your place for, the things that come burdensome because you have five insurance to pay for the car. You have this insurance. The burdensome things too often what we call. But my Bible is taking my mind from that. Which is hard because of how I was bred. When the reality, I'm not talking about, as so I say, if we use our experience, we'll not go there. Um, the reality, I'm coming. The reality is this that it says that. God said, those are not essentials. Don't even think about it. I want to show you not even a big donkey or a big giraffe. I want to use a small bird. I want to use flowers to show you the insignificant, how well I take care of them. They have no soul. They have nothing but my love. Take care of them. You are created in my image. You are my child. Why are you trying to compare yourself with them? Why do you think the things that makes you my child is what they possess? He said, look here, Solomon in all his wisdom. And this is the reason why Solomon is the greatest to be chronicled. Because when he was given the opportunity to exercise faith and to ask, what did he ask for? He asked for the wisdom to know God Almighty so he can lead the people aright into salvation. As a result of that, so we start having faith in the evidence of a good God rather than faith in the God himself. When we see the evidence of a good God, then we give God praise. But we're falling short of what he wants us to be, where he wants to bring us. Faith, brethren, is something a little different. It's new, it's strange to me. So bear with me. But it's getting my eyes out. Last night when I saw this, I said, praise God. Praise God. I understand, brethren, I understand the situation. I understand. It's not easy from your four years old, you've been inculcated, you were told that this is life, especially if you were born and grown as an, as an Adventist, and now you are over how much years pursuing, and somebody this morning, insignificant, maybe misled, according to your idea, come tell you, say, this is not it. But one day, by God's grace, if we really mean it, you'll see what I'm saying. Just remember, yes, my brother. Um, there's a statement that uh, uh, I wrote in my book for many, many years. I, I saw this statement in a book. And it says that um, it's another, it's another, um, like the one in Hebrews 11. Mm -hmm. But it, it says that faith is the spiritual hand that touches infinity. Right. Can you elaborate on that a little bit for me? Faith is the spiritual hand that touches infinity. Right. So faith is the spiritual hand that touches God. And obviously the statement is the statement is true because that's what we're saying. God is saying that we should have faith in order for him to do. It's only that sometimes that can be misconstrued to fit our situation. But you know, it's a true statement in and of itself. It's faith we need 
to move the mountain. So let me ask so, this is now my conclusion to the matter. You see, to have faith, brethren, there must be an understanding. And what understanding? An understanding of the plan of salvation. Education. There must be an understanding of the plan of salvation for the faith I'm talking about. Must be. Because maybe your mind is down here. My mind is on the whole chart. I'm looking at Abel. What faith could Abel have? What, what knowledge could he have to exercise such faith? Abel, Abel had an understanding of the plan of salvation. So if we are falling short, these are practical things that we can use. We can go home with, right? To be educated. You know, I want to understand better the plan of salvation. An understanding must come. The plan of salvation. That's number one. Number two. And then from understanding, we must be obedient to the plan of salvation. We must, obedience mean that I have no objective, no desire, no intention, not even to my own life I don't love. Because the plan of salvation is preeminence in me. The plan of salvation, I understood it. When I say, what do I understand? I understand that God, the creator of the universe, saw me who has chose other than him. And you know what he did? He did not pass me away. He, he, he looked at his son, his only begotten son, his only begotten son, and he says that my son Maurice needs you, a savior. And Christ could have said, look here, you, I mean, we just started, we can start again. Or, you know, he, he chose some other, why me? Christ had the same mind his father had. He looked at me and he said, Maurice, need me. And God and his son came. Christ came in my stead. Christ came and lived. And even when he came and lived, I spot on him. I beat him. I kicked him out. I rejected him. The only little good he did that I liked, he, he multiplied fish and bread and I ate it. And then I shouted, crucify him. And the father could have withdrew his plan because I was rebellious. I had no desire. Christ saw beyond my faults and he knew my needs. Understanding this plan of salvation, the love of God, that cannot be explained by my tongue. We have to know that and understand that. So when Abel and Cain came to present an offering as to the plan of salvation, it was a prescribed one according to heaven's timetable. Cain thought that he should do a little more. Something a little more than what God actually asked for. But our best allegiance that is not in accordance with his will will bring us displeasure. Sometimes if you want to know if you're in his will, how comforted are you? So when he was discomforted, God spoke to him and said, Why are you not happy? So you don't you know if you do right, you'll be happy. But Mammon was the way he sought it. He couldn't understand why God could not accept this plus. It was also in the name of the Lord, it was in church. But Abel was satisfied <coughs> because he yielded to what God asked of him. And he presented our friend God honored it and his brother said I'm gonna kill you and he didn't back away I want to say it's, it's similar to Stephen's situation maybe some might say hide around a stone and hit him or whatever it might be he knew because he stood up to death he loved not his life to the death it was not a hide and lick he died for the gospel That plan, you have to understand that. And then, when you understood it, you must obey it. Nothing in the world now could ever be more clamorous. And sometimes we get to that point in our brain. What is when we're on our sick bed, when life has ended for us, cancer eating the body, then we decide to take the road that should have been when we were youth. We trust everything now to Him. Faith swirls, faith now sets in. 
Now you could read to me Matthew chapter 6 with no forms I'll accept it. Because what is money to me? What is the plan of this world to me? I'm sick. I'm terminally ill. After we obey and understand that, brethren, then it should be. I, want, I could have continued, but time has run out. I want us to also look, though, in Hebrews chapter 11. And you will realize that these, to verse 4, verse 5, verse 8, verse 7, is it, 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 verse 9, you'll realize that all those are contrasts to verse 11. Because verse 11 said, through faith, Sarah. That's another issue. Brethren, it's one thing. You must, you must not confuse what is by faith and what is through faith. That's another issue. We can't deal with that this morning. But it's very significant. It was there. It is there for a reason. It's new. It's new, but I, 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 I trust God that if we will look into it, think of ourselves. Let us farm sick. Let us farm terminal ill. And, and let us see if we could put our faith somewhere. I'm not saying that we should. What I'm offering is greater prosperity than we have been pursuing and having. Prosperity first in the spiritual that we have brought prosperity in the physical. The world will wonder after your God who provided for you. And they will wonder after your God who is a healing God in and through you. You get what I'm saying? But we have cut it short. We have only, only, the world can't even wonder after us. What we have? What do we have? Nada. We only fool ourselves and tell ourselves that we are doing well. Who scale with Midrash? And I don't know. You have to find, you know what it is? This way of faith helps us to be very invisible against ourselves. You know who you measure your scale at? You could never go to Mr. Shields. <coughs> you could never go to Mr. Heavens. You have to find somebody in your own family or in your peers to say you are better than them or like them. You see what, you see what that faith does? It becomes antagonistic against your very own. What is doing well? What is prosperity? I'm going to ask the question. What is it? What is it? Couldn't be as to what. The prosperity is in Jesus Christ. The prosperity is in what we're just looking at. And I'm just saying to us that we have been robbing ourselves too long. It's not too late for us to regain our footage. Let us not look at our current situation. Let us have faith. Faith says this, that we would have indeed take the substance and the evidence of the thing we pray for. What are we praying for? We should be praying for the ability in us to fully represent Christ. That's what faith only should be. And so we should be living in this world as Christ living in us. That's what faith should be by faith. So Enoch took it to that level as a testimony against us. Enoch walk around like people should be doing today. And that's why Enoch was transported to heaven because he has exercised that faith to our level. Even though he didn't have the indwelling Christ. But faith took him further than David. It took him to not to see death on this earth. I'm saying that's our place because we ought to be living, we can be living when Christ comes. To be translated alive. But the faith of Enoch is needed today. The faith of, you know, Adventists and today's world uh, um, portray the faith of Job. You know what they're talking about? Not Job in his fall. And they forgot Job's story. That's Lucifer saw it this way that Job has because he loved God. So God bless him because. And so if God should take it away, he wouldn't anymore. But Job had an unswerving love and desire for the truth he heard and learned of Christ. Right? As a result of that, he anchored unto God. That caused him to have that, and Lucifer saw it. I want you to know that Lucifer he couldn't have been touched. Lucifer declared that he had an edge around him. And God said, you're kidding. You're looking at material things. I want to show you something. Let's remove the edge that you think 
and let us show you who Job really is. I'm just introducing to you Job in the downfall, Job before prosperity. Because they don't realize that Job had and lost and had again. What afforded him this? <clears throat> faith, abiding faith in God. He didn't care about what he had. He said, naked I come in this world and naked I'm going back. I pray that I will trust and pray that this new thing that comes in my mind that has been a blessing. But I'm just looking at it. I hope you will look at it too, you know. I hope it will help you really, really come to the point where we can truly be seen in this world as faithful as those who are Christ. Thank you very much.